Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and this time it is the Trek 1120 Bikepacker. And for those who don't know this, a bikepacker is a mix between a touring bike and a mountain bike. So if you're curious about all the pros and cons of the Trek 1120, watch the review. Welcome to the review of the Trek 1120 and if this is the first time you are visiting my channel then maybe it's good for you to know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid by Trek to make this review and I don't have any affiliate deals. So if you want to support independent reviewing please subscribe to my channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram and don't forget to hit the alarm bells in the YouTube function so that you know when I release a new video. Many thanks in advance. So now on to the Trek 1120 Bikepacker. The bike that I'm testing here is a size 17 and a half inch because I am quite a small guy with 1 meter 70 almost. Um, Trek states a weight of 14.17 kilograms and I think that's going to be for a medium size one. Uh, and I measured this one on my precise scale at 15.34 kilograms so a little bit more i think but that's also with the racks in there and let's say um, the luggage system to keep the bags so that's the total weight also with the pedals because there's no point in measuring it without i think now on to the technical features of the bike the frame of the track is made out of aluminium and as Trek likes to state it, it's alpha platinum aluminium. What the, exactly the weight is of the frame solo, I don't know because that's one of the things that Trek doesn't tell us. The front fork, that one is not made out of aluminium, but it's made out of carbon fiber and later uh, more on that subject. Then. On a trekking bike we like a, to carry a lot of water. Well with the Trek you've got two of these bottle cage holders um, inside the frame. What, what if you want to carry a bag, a triangle bag inside the frame? Well there are three attachment points here as well so you can always put a big one and a half liter bottle below if you are losing one or two of these. And if you want to carry more stuff or bottles then on the front fork on both sides there are three attachment points that you can connect gear to um, and then we're talking about the frame there is something really special going on at the rear end with the chain stays and the dropouts so let's move over to that side so on to the chain stay technique um, as you can see the chain stay on the right side of the bike is above the chain itself and that's done for a reason now let me explain this a bit um, on touring bike or trekking bikes we like a longer wheelbase because that gives a more stable ride on the long haul when we have a mountain bike and we do tight cornering we'd rather have a shorter wheelbase because that's easier with cornering on a bike packer we have something like a mix in between now the 1120 has a 29 inch wheel which is really big now if you want to build a 29er with a mountain bike frame and a sort of short wheelbase then the only thing you can do is raise the chainstay on the right side to it is above well basically the crank itself because otherwise this would turn in where the wheel is and then the wheel should be going to the back leading to a longer wheelbase which is not clever if you want a tight turning bike but now there's something else which is very clever and that's the dropouts or as Trek likes to call them stranglehold dropouts and um, as you can see the axle is at this moment in the rear position in the dropout if I loosen the tensioner on the other side and I loosen the nuts then I can turn this knob uh, when I take this plastic plastic part out first and then I can change the position of the axle to the front side of the dropout and this is uh, 15 millimeters of distance um, by changing this you change the wheelbase of the bike in the rear position you get a bit more touring stable right in the front you get a bit more nimble right air for curvy tracks um, i've used it on both um, ways and to be honest i really like it in the rear because it gives a little bit of a more stable ride and i still think that the 1120 is really a capable bike on tight cornering so 
this is for me the best position. The track is equipped with a 11 speed gear system and the shifters and the rear derailleur are from Shimano, the M7000 SLX series. Um, in the front you find a sprocket from race face with 30 T's and on the rear a cassette which has the smallest is 11 and the largest one is 46 which gives a really wide range from normal trekking on flat countries um, to basically hardcore mountain biking on steep terrain. Then the derailleur has got shadow plus technique which means that you can block it and it's a special lever here and now you can see that it doesn't go anywhere if I pull it again this is possible. If you put it in the upright position so you block the derailleur then the chain has got a bit more tension and this prevents of course the chain from slapping into the chain stay but it also prevents that if you're riding a very bumpy terrain that the chain might get off the front sprocket um, which will probably result in some damage if it gets between here or otherwise if it falls on this side you really have a turnover which is not good either. Um, the Shimano SLX M7000 it's quite an entry level system but I do like SLX because it's cheap to replace it's well doesn't request that many maintenance and well to be honest I don't have any beef with it and never fails me and also on this one the SLX system has never failed me once. The brakes on the 1120 are from SRAM and it is the level T which is a quite basic setup. Front and rear have got the same caliper, it's got two pistons and they got the same um, disc. It's a 180 millimeter disc. The good thing about the brake system from SRAM on this bike is that you don't need a lot of force to apply a lot of force to the brake lever to get really good stopping power. It's also very well balanced and especially in the front you can really feel this point coming when you're almost blocking the wheel but not really so you don't tip over which I think is excellent. I like the brake levers because the levers itself they're quite small so you don't get easily hooked behind branches and they fit two fingers perfectly. Um, also note that there is this little screw and with this screw you can adjust the distance from the lever to um, the handlebar so that it fits small hands and big hands. There's one thing we didn't talk about yet and that's basically the tires and the rims and the hubs. Um, the hubs they are boost 110 in the front and boost 148 in the rear of course. The rims they are tubeless ready. Um, to be honest I would never ever go on a bike like this um, when you do a trekking without tubes. So I really like tubes, they're easy to, to exchange and easy to repair. So I always would go with tubes. If you use this one as a mountain bike once in a while, then of course then you can do without the tubes because you save some weight. The tires, they are 29ers of course and they are 3.0s, which is really really wide. And you have to play around with the pressure in the tires to get all the comfort because you know they are really bouncy sometimes. if you put too much pressure in them. And now I promise to tell you something a bit more about the fork itself. It's a carbon one and I've noticed that on normal let's say tarmac and harder gravel roads the fork is really vulnerable to every little bump there is. It's a really harsh one. It's not that flexible and I miss a bit of flexibility to be honest and that is a bit less comfortable than I'm used to. The good thing is of course that you can play around with the tire pressure. So if you're finding it a bit not comfortable then just release a bit of the tire pressure and you will get more comfort. But of course you will also lose a bit of energy. One of the things that I really like on the Trek 1120 is the dropper seat post. You know just with a lever on your handlebar push it and you can put your seat in a lower position. It's not only convenient on mountain biking when you're going uphill or steep downhill, it's also very functional if you put this a bit higher on normal trekking distance because you just change your seating position a little bit and I think that's really comfortable. One of the things I'm not totally convinced about is the shape of the handlebar because it is very curvy, it's curved towards you but it's also curved downwards and because of the riding position on the bike I've noticed there's quite a lot of 
weight distributed through the wrists. The curve of this handlebar is just not the curve that is fitting to my body and not to my wrists. That's a very personal thing, so I want to change this and I will keep you updated on how I change this to my liking. The other thing I didn't really like was the Bontrager Montreux saddle because it's way too hard for a trekking mountain bike. You know, if you are a mountain biker, then a hard saddle is fine because you move around a lot. But on a trekking bike, which this also is, and you do long distances, you're long ways, long times in the saddle. Um, and then this one is way and way too hard. So I will probably change this one for my own Brooks C17 Cambium saddle that I have on my mountain bike. And that has been on travel bikes, well, since I test them, since the Brooks Cambium is there. And, and I'm really, I'm really fond of that, that saddle. So I will keep you posted if that makes a difference on this bike. The rack in the rear is a very nice, well-designed piece. Um, it's connected to the frame with two bolts, hex bolts on this side and of course two on the other side. And it is a very stable platform. It's really one with the bike. Um, on top, it's a good platform to put a dry bag on here. So if you want to carry more luggage and it also prevents when it's wet that your wheel, well, maybe wets your pants. Um, and also the side, they protect uh, your luggage really good from the rolling wheel. I used the rack with the standard track uh, luggage system, which I liked a lot, but you can also fix, fix other uh, luggage systems to this rack, of course. Then you can see, like at the front, uh, there are all these metal parts where you can hook elastic bands around so you can secure your luggage really good. Then notice this detail, it is a fixing point for a tail light or a reflector like uh, safety first and good thing is there are two little hex screws in here so you can remove it if you don't like it what i do actually really like is the luggage system and let me get rid of the helmet and the gloves and some of the plants um, it's the fact that the rack itself is very solid like i told you already but there is a sort of a webbing or a harness uh, connected with velcro to the rack itself. And the good thing about the harness is that you don't need to buy extra bags of panniers because most of us we do have dry bags at home or maybe even if you've got a bag where you throw your waste in uh, away, um, that works as well. You know, and with these uh, buckles and compression straps, they are quite easy to load. Uh, it takes some while to get really accustomed to it, but it's quite easy if you're accustomed to it. Uh, and one top tip, if you do this with like, let's say the waterproof bags, this one buckle, loop it through your luggage so you will never lose it on the go. Um, what I also do like is that there is a lot of different loops on the side so that you can connect uh, elastic bands or other velcro straps or like I did in this case a carabiner to the loops itself so you can really expand it also to the side. So I really like the luggage system. The rack in the front has got a very clever shape. It's like a sort of a, well, a shovel from an excavator. It really wraps around the luggage itself and I put my tent in here and I got my pouch with small money when I take the ferry um, and I'll take my tent off this and you can see the rack a bit better. Velcro steps, they do the business. Um, as you can see, it's really like a big mouth shovel thing. Um, it's connected to the front fork, to the crown, with four hex bolts, and it's a very solid construction I've noticed so far. Um, the rack itself is capable of carrying a load of approximately seven kilos, which is, I think, quite enough on this high position in the front of the bike, because otherwise it might affect your um, stability and the handling of the bike itself if you put more weight onto it. And what I also do like is the fact that um, there are these little knobs on the rack itself. So if you have got something like an elastic band, this is really uh, a good thing to put it onto, so it's really grippy. Um, another thing which is quite neat, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little piece of rubber here, and that prevents, if you steer really, really tight, prevents the rack from hitting the frame. So on to the rating, how do I rate the Trek 1120? Well, in the months that I've been able to test the bike, um, well, I really liked it. The comfort is quite good. Um, the brakes are forgiving, easy to use, 
and the stopping power is enough. The 11 speed is really suitable from like the flat Netherlands to mountainous areas. And also the extra, which I think is a bonus, is the dropper seat post. What I didn't like basically is the saddle, which I think is too hard. And I don't like the shape of the handlebar. Uh, what you should be aware of is that the carbon fork is quite, quite, quite very stiff. Um, so play around with the tire pressures. If you go biking, bring a pump. The best thing about the 1120, of course, is its luggage system. Both racks are absolutely fantastic. They are one with the bike, which means that all your luggage stays very well together. You ride as one big system. And it doesn't matter if you do long hauls over tarmac or you do really nice mountain bike trails. Then the price. In Europe, it's 2,699 euros and in the US it's a bit less and I don't think that's too much money for a bike like this. If you look at it as you got a trekking bike, you got a mountain bike and you got a bike packer then you got basically three bikes for the price in one. In that case if you take the quality, the build quality and the price and you balance it then I think the Trek 1120 Bikepacker deserves four and a half stars. I hope this review was useful to you and if it was please give it a like or leave a comment below. And you know this was my first bike review in English which is not my native tongue. So if you've got any remarks, improvements that I should do on my bike slang or whatever please let me know. I told it in the beginning already, but I do these reviews totally for free. I'm not earning any money with this. I just do this because I want to be a 100% independent reviewer. If you would like to support what I do and value independent reviewing, please subscribe to my channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram. Really, if you do it, it really, really helps. And don't forget to put the alarm bell on so you know when I uploaded a new video review. For now I say many 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 thanks and you know them. Enjoy the outdoors. Ciao ciao!